What's going on everybody? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome to the last watch list video of the year. In this one, we're going to talk about four long-term stocks that I think are probably going to do well in 2024 if certain events happen. We're also going to take a look at the current market conditions and what you may want to keep in mind going into the year ahead. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, when it comes to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ actually had a phenomenal, well, maybe not a phenomenal year, but a pretty good year. 2023 started down here at around 10,500 and it ended the year up around 15,000, which is absolutely remarkable. So NASDAQ did extremely well. The S&P 500 also did pretty good. Currently testing all-time highs right now. We haven't yet broken through, but it looks like it could be on the horizon. The Dow Jones is breaking through to all-time highs right now. And so we are ending 2023 on a very high note, which is very nice to see. In general, the volatility index or the VIX also declined over time. We did see a little bit of a bump over the last sort of one to two weeks here, but in general, the volatility in the market declined. Bitcoin went up though. We are seeing a little bit of resistance over the last month. We cannot really break through and stay above 44,000. We're currently trading just above 42,000. And we do have some news about an ETF, a spot Bitcoin ETF, basically getting approval here sometime in January. So I'm very excited to see how that goes. And I think it could drive the price of Bitcoin higher because it would increase the demand. Now, if you're interested in getting started with crypto or you want $25 as just a free return on your money, if you deposit and trade $100 or more on the Newton platform, they will give you $25 and deposit it right into your account. The link for that is down below. It's pretty much a 25% risk-free return. Well, you, you got to make a trade with it. So you, you get $25. All you have to do is trade with $100 it's well worth it, it's well worth the effort, and it gets you invested. Next one I wanna talk about here is West Texas Light Crude. It continues to decline, it continues to hit resistance. We are still trading below our moving averages, and there is pressure on this market. People are worried about slowdowns in some major economies, and that is basically going to decrease the demand while supply remains the same. And so we've got some contrasting forces right now. We've got some people in the Middle East that are trying to cut back on supply, OPEC, particularly and so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with the price of resources in the next little while when it comes to uranium though pr the price continues to go up it was at 86 dollars per pound when i showed this chart to you last week it is now at 91 and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon we were trading pretty flat at 50 now we are at 91 that is a huge move of about 80 percent and so we are seeing some major action in uranium it might be something you want to take advantage of next one here is lithium we're actually seeing lithium continue to sell off we have basically traded sideways going into December here, but it was a terrible year for lithium. The prices continued to fall off pretty much through the entire year and it did not look good, but it does mean that some of these electric vehicle companies might be able to buy batteries for a little bit cheaper, which could be a benefit to them. And so it depends sort of what side of the trade you are on. When it comes to earnings though, we don't have a whole lot going on. We got Constellation Brands on Friday. We got Walgreens Boot something here on Thursday. So not a huge earnings week and nothing happening on Monday and Tuesday. When it comes to market conditions, like I said, the markets did well in 2023, but these higher interest rates are putting a lot of pressure on certain companies and we are expecting rate cuts in 2024. If you're a company that's heavily leveraged or has a lot of debt or really needs financing, these high interest rates put a lot of pressure on your business model, particularly REITs and real estate companies. And so they are really gonna get a sigh of relief if we see a lot of rate cuts coming in the next year. Crypto's also geared up to have a big year. Who knows if it's actually gonna happen? It could go the total other way, but we do have news of an ETF expected in January. And then we also have the halving event occurring in April. That is where the reward for mining Bitcoin gets cut in half and it reduces the supply and the creation of new Bitcoins. And so, What's happening here is that in the first half of this year, we have an event that could drastically increase the demand for Bitcoin. And we have an event that is going to drastically decrease the amount of new Bitcoin being created. And that is a recipe for higher prices. That is why I currently own options in a couple of Bitcoin miners. And so if you wanna see my portfolio, check out my Discord. We're gonna talk about that in one second. But next one here is that AI continues to be the hot topic of the year. There was just a major lawsuit filed against some of the AI companies claiming that they're using journalist, basically content and resources 
during their scraping process, and that is going to be a major lawsuit. It's going to continue to be a hot topic for a long time. And uh, if you're not taking advantage of AI as a technology, you probably might wanna consider that. Now, in my Discord chat a couple days ago, I got asked, hey Zach, which sectors are you betting on in 2024? This was my response. I wanna share it with you because hopefully it, it provides some value and I wanna give you an insight into my Discord chat. I said, I think crypto is gonna do well if the ETFs get approved. If they don't get approved, I think that could actually drag down prices because it could, it's basically a fundamental rejection of regulators and Bitcoin. And so that would be a very bad situation if these ETFs do not get approved in some way. I also think utility and pipeline companies are gonna become more attractive as interest rates decline. I also really like renewable energy operators long-term like Brookfield Renewable Energy. I'm also waiting for quantum computing to become the next hot trend. I think that there is a, uh, a chance here that quantum computing will never be the same size of hot topic as AI because it just doesn't face consumers as much but I think it is going to be a hot topic at some point in the next few years here. And I think we're gonna see a lot of people make a lot of money in that industry. I think it's just a waiting game here until that technology gets to the point where it has some real big, large applications and really makes starts to make a difference in the world. And so I'm watching that one very closely. Like I said, uranium prices are skyrocketing, so there's a clear opportunity there. And lastly, I think that long-term, these middleman companies are gonna struggle. What I mean by that is that companies like Nike, Adidas, Canada Goose, Apple, Peloton, all of these newer companies wanna sell directly to the consumer and they wanna build that relationship and they wanna have that touch point and it is going to make the business model of being a retailer more and more difficult. I'm talking about companies like Foot Locker or like Best Buy that sell to the consumer but really, they're just buying from the brand, marking it up and selling it to the consumer. I think with the way the world is going, those companies are gonna have a larger and larger uphill battle in front of them. And I'm not a huge fan of that business model. So that is my prediction for kind of 2024 and beyond. When it comes to individual stocks, like I said, I like the utility companies. I like some of the energy companies. Enbridge is one of the companies that I really like. They have a healthy dividend. They're currently breaking out of a short-term resistance. They're about to test this long-term resistance right here. I think it's a good long-term company. I think they're well positioned. They just announced they're gonna increase their dividend. I like the company. There's nothing wrong if you're getting into Enbridge right now. And if you wait for the breakout here and it rides back up to 46 or $50, that's gonna be a solid investment. Next one here is NEO Incorporated. This is the electric vehicle manufacturer out of China. The reason it is on my radar right now is because we just made a double bottom on $7. We're breaking through our moving averages. We've got higher volume right now, and we've got lots of room to run higher. And so I like this stock from a technical standpoint. I also like that the market they are in is the largest EV market in the world. And so I think they have a big opportunity ahead of them. And I'm thinking this could be the bottom for the stock but you might need to wait for a little more confirmation if you're buying in long-term. Short-term, I like this for a quick trend trade. Next one here is Albemarle. This is the largest lithium producer that's publicly traded in North America. I like the company, I like the business model, they're growing quickly, but lithium prices are falling off a cliff. As soon as lithium prices start to rebound, hopefully at some point in 2024, this is the company that I'm putting my money into because I think they're the best position, they're the best run, and I think that long-term, lithium has a high demand, but it's really all gonna be dictated by the price of lithium. If lithium starts to increase in value, this company's gonna do well. Now, the last company here is ASML. This is, this is the company that makes the machines that make the chips. They are super unique. They have a huge strategic advantage. They're very, very basically protected in the market. I like the company. I like what they're doing. I'm waiting for them to break out a resistance here around 765. And then I think it's gonna run back up to 900 really quick. And so I am watching this one for the breakout. I'm watching this one for a long-term entry. I like the company. I like what they're doing. And I think it's gonna do extremely well in 2024 and all the way up to 2030. This is a long-term play in a company that is gonna be super, super important to how the world works. Now, if you are interested in seeing my cash flow portfolio and where I put all of these utility stocks and my dividend plays, I am sharing all of that information on Blossom Social. It is a social network for trading and investing and sharing your knowledge in basically a way that is specifically designed for finance and investing. You can share your portfolio, you can see what other people are buying, you can see what's in their portfolio, and you can get other people's opinion 
on your research or my research. You can kind of just basically network with everybody to see how everybody else feels and what they're buying or selling. It's a super cool community. You got to check it out. The link for everything I've talked about in this video is going to be in the description down below. And I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Good luck trading. Good luck investing. And we'll talk to you soon.